Now, the next use of this particular local anesthetic agents is in the infiltration anesthesia. Right? In the infiltration anesthesia. Now, so if you take in the infiltration anesthesia, what we do is the local anesthetic is injected subcutaneously in the area of the operation site. So here the local anesthesia is injected subcutaneously. Wherever you want that anesthetic effect, that particular local anesthesia or local anesthetic drug is infiltrated subcutaneously in the area of operation site. Right in the area of operation site. Now, once this local anesthetic is in infiltrated subcutaneously at the area of the operation site, what this particular local anesthetic will do is local anesthetic will block the sensory nerve endings. So, this local anesthetic will block the sensory nerve endings in that site. Okay, so we'll block the sensory nerve endings at that particular site. Now, where is this particular infiltration anesthesia useful for? Remember, this infiltration anesthesia, it is used in case of minor surgeries, right? Okay, it is useful for minor surgeries, right? Minor surgeries, wherever like we do incisions, right? Wherever we do the incisions, or wherever we do excisions, right? So, wherever we do the incisions or, okay, right. So, wherever we do the incisions or excisions or even for suturing, alright? And even for the treatment of hydrocele, Okay, so for the minor surgeries, we infiltrate this local anesthetic subcutaneously to the operation site. Now, now for example, if you want that the effect of the local anesthetic has to be increased, right? If you want that the effect of the local anesthetic has to be increased, adrenaline can be added to the local anesthetic. Okay, so what you have to do is along with this local anesthetic, you add the adrenaline. Now, what this adrenaline will do? It will cause cutaneous vasoconstriction and by ca causing cutaneous vasoconstriction, the drug will not be absorbed into the systemic circulation. So the effect of the drug in that area can be increased or the duration of the drug or the duration of action of the drug in that area can be increased. Okay. So what you do is you add local anesthetic along with the adrenaline. So once you add local anesthetic will along with adrenaline, this will prolong the duration of the drug. Okay, this will prolong the duration of the drug and not only prolong the duration of the action of the drug, even the systemic side effects, right, even the systemic side effects can be reduced. Okay, so that is the advantage of adding local anesthetic to the adrenaline. Next, now let after this particular infiltration anesthesia, the other use of this particular local anesthetic drugs is the nerve blocks right it is also used in the nerve blocks now so if you take this particular nerve blocks here what we do is in case of the infiltration anesthesia what we are doing we are injecting or we are infiltrating the local anesthetic drug subcutaneously at the site of operation wherever we are interested whereas in case of nerve blocks, what we do is we inject the local anesthetic agent, right? Local anesthetic agent is injected around the nerve trunks, right? Local anesthetic agent is injected around the right around the nerve trunks. So, it is injected around the nerve trunks supplying a particular area to anesthetize. 
So once you in inject the local anesthetic drug around the nerve trunks, what this particular local anesthetic will do is, it will anesthetize all the nerves which are coming to that area and which are leaving from that area. Alright, so this local anesthetic will anesthetize the nerves coming and leaving that area right coming and leaving that area okay now now what are the various nerve blocks right what are the various nerve blocks so this particular local anesthesia what it will do is it will anesthetize the nerves which are coming to that area and as well as they will also anesthetize the nerves which are leaving from that area now let me discuss the blocks now so this particular nerve blocks they include right they include the blocks around the head and neck right blocks around the head and neck so if you take the various nerves that can be blocked around the head and neck are number one you can block the stellate ganglion next you can block the brachial plexus right you can block the brachial plexus you can block the cervical plexus you can block the trigeminal nerve and not only that you can also block the phrenic nerve <clears throat> okay so these are all the blocks which can happen once that particular local anesthetic drug is injected around the nerve trunks next now remember this blocks i mean the local anesthetic drug can also be injected even into the upper limbs right can be injected even into the upper limbs so when this is when this local anesthetic is injected into the upper limbs the blocks which can happen is there can be a block to the brachial plexus and even we can also have the wrist block right even we can also have the blockage around the wrist that is wrist block next this particular local anesthetic drug in order to have the nerve block they can also be injected around the thorax and as well as abdomen right they can also be injected around the thorax and as well as the abdomen now in order to have the nerve block around the thorax and abdomen now which all nerves can be blocked by injecting the local anesthetic around the thorax and abdomen remember here the intercostal nerves right intercostal nerves which are supplying to the respiratory muscles they can be blocked celiac plexus can be blocked right the celiac plexus can be blocked and the other thing is the lumbar sympathetic chain ilioinguinal nerve all these can be blocked by injecting the local anesthetic into the thorax and as well as the abdomen next this particular local anesthetic can also cause the nerve blocks even in the lower limbs even in the lower limbs now once this once this local anesthetic is injected into the lower limbs what all blocks can happen is number one we can have the perivascular block right perivascular block and not only that even the psoas muscle compartment can also be blocked right the psoas compartment that can be blocked okay so this is what is called as the nerve block right so what are we doing here the local anesthetic is injected around the nerve trunk so that will anesthetize the nerves which are coming to that area and leaving from that area and that local anesthetic can be injected in the head and neck that will block the stellate ganglion cervical plexus trigeminal nerve and phrenic nerve and this can be injected even into the upper limbs that will block the brachial plexus and as well as the wrist block can happen that can be injected into the thorax and as well as the abdomen that will block the intercostal nerve celiac plexus and that can also be used for injecting even into the lower limbs that will cause the perivascular block and as well as the psoas compartment block now the multiple choice question here remember whenever you are doing the brachial plexus block 
what is the most common complication of the brachial plexus block this will be the multiple choice question remember whenever you are trying to inject the local anesthetic drug around the brachial plexus there is a very great chance that you can puncture the pleura and that will result in what is called as pneumothorax right that will result in what is called as pneumothorax so remember pneumothorax is the most common complication of the brachial plexus block right so this is completely about the nerve block